are listening to an Atomic Broadcasting production. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the feature presentation. And remember, do your part, such as like, comment, rate, and don't forget to tell a friend to tune in for an Atomic Time. Now, where did we leave off? Ah, yes. The party came across a woman and her child in a wagon, threatened by fire and ghouls bearing an ominous religious symbol. They dispatched the ghouls and rescued the survivors before escorting them safely to town. I've been playing a lot of the Elden Ring DLC. Has anybody else? Can I talk about this or no? I literally don't have the game. Get out, Sven. <laughs> Please I don't. I also don't have the game. I hate all of you. Nor I, do I have money. I've been playing it, but I keep having to take breaks because... Frustrations. It, it's it's the kind of thing where, you know, when you just keep going uh-huh. at that level of octane, it's yeah. like, no, nah, I need a break. No, I get you. I took a break from the DLC. I continued to play Elden Ring, but I took a break from the DLC to fight Melania in one. Hey. That was my first time fighting her. I you did solo the same her. thing. She's nowhere near as hard as the end boss of the DLC. Yeah. Spoilers. Which one's the end boss? I the can't DLC? tell you. Why? It is spoilers. spoilers. Oh. <laughs> it is you, can tell me, you can tell me later, though. Uh, okay. I have the Before game, I but I don't <laughs> intend to get the DLC for it. It's just that's what I've been doing, and I've been excited to talk about it. But I've already yeah. talked about it with you. Yeah. What? Yeah. When did that happen? That was a while ago. You weren't listening. No. You were giving Jenkins You and Jenkins strikes. were on your yeah. own. Uh, he was deal. striking me from HR. Oh. From HR? Yeah. yeah H- someone one. said call HR, so I did. I don't because, know why I got because it. Because we were we were going beyond crossing the fourth wall and someone's threatening licking, licking their uh, microphone. Oh, that's why. Don't lick your microphones. You can't See, stop we, me. If we did get those fancy new microphones we were talking about, <laughs> they would be out of licking rain. Oh. <laughs> Unless I stand up. Why are you up. disappointed by that? <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to lick your Texture. microphone? Ew. <laughs> I mean, if you want to bring your own microphone from home, to live, <laughs> other people have to use these microphones. Hey, that just adds flavor. Ew. <laughs> It's a finely cultivated. <laughs> okay. okay. This like is my microphone point. now. Yeah, we'll just put a label on it. And it's like that's Sven's. He licked it, therefore he claimed it. Wait, I Sven got to lick his microphone? <laughs> 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 no, you don't. No, he's the only one. <laughs> this is garbage. We at the Atomic Broadcasting Studio do not encourage licking of <laughs> electronic devices of any kind. I if you get a weird tingly feeling, that's wrong. It shouldn't happen. <laughs> Also, other people use that mic. Nolan uses that mic. Oh, not anymore. <laughs> I didn't lick Has it. Has okay. Nolan licked it? I didn't Listen. lick it. I don't think Listen. Nolan licked it. One thing is missing from podcasts as a whole is a proper safety, like OSHA type <laughs> group. And like the fact that there are no safety regulations involved in podcasting is criminal. I, I want a safety. <laughs> I want a high res vest now. No, even no. though we're in an. <laughs> Sam, are you going to spearhead vest. the OSHA for podcasting? No. I did OSHA ten. I am the most qualified. No, I did, I have o- I did OSHA eleven. You, I don't what? think that's a thing. <laughs> I have it a car. Do you? I have a car. What <laughs> <laughs> is OSHA eleven? Where you like do a heist to get somebody out of something dangerous? <laughs> yes. Same thing. Exactly. Uh, I OSHA. hired George Clooney and Matt Damon to help. Wait, that was a good movie. Can I, I be in OSHA 13? Not yet. <laughs> Darn. We aren't there yet. Well, well, when we get yet. there. Once the once we do a second heist, but then the bad guys are holding some of our loved ones hostage to do the third heist, but then we turn it around on them. Okay. And oh. instead, safety is not outlawed <gasps> and is encouraged. Because the bad guys wanted yeah. safety to not be Osh- a thing. OSHA. OSHA 11. Ocean 11. <laughs> no, OSHA 11. Oh, she said it right. It's all about stealing a forklift. <laughs> That's really... That- <laughs> I know. I'm not certified, but I can drive a forklift. It's, I have before. Yeah, it's very I, important. And, the, and the same. they got away with yeah. a pallet jack, too. So like, Oh, those fiends. <laughs> they got their pallet jack license and everything. Wait, you have to have a license to drive no. one of those? No. 
a forklift? I wouldn't. A I wouldn't jack. recommend no, a pallet or jack. Or a pallet oh. jack. I don't think one typically drives a pallet. One jack. drags. No, a pallet. actually, there are some pallet jacks. You, if you get exactly. on it like a scooter, which I've definitely Isn't never done. So not, much. Not <laughs> is, is someone that not riding? Like you ride a scooter, you do not drive a scooter unless it's motorized. I have a motorized one at work. I was about to say scooter? I also no, have pallet jack. Dr- <laughs> ridden a motorized pallet jack. Hey, that's before. pretty cool. I like. That. And since I don't plan on ever working in a warehouse again, hopefully, I feel comfortable saying it was very fun. Officer, uh, do it again. I was not driving this scooter. I was traveling with this scooter. <laughs> As just the- go down a hill riding on a pallet. <laughs> As the now semi-certified podcast OSHA member, I'd like to say we need a motorized pallet jack for the podcast. How do you get semi-certified? Do we have what that much it? merch? What What does that even do? It's already, they're already basically orange, so it's already branded. R- real fast, I should probably say, under no circumstances should you follow any of our bad advice and ride pallet jacks Don't like scooters. Don't at work. Kids? Except you should because it's fun. <laughs> if you're We're not adult. liable for any mistakes you may do. <laughs> if you're an adult, you are free to do whatever you want with them pallet jacks. But if you're a kid, don't do anything with pallet jacks. <laughs> Period. <laughs> this is not legal advice? Point. Question mark? <laughs> I don't think this is very advice. We are legally giving you advice to be safe. Yeah. <laughs> That sounds. Yes. They should put us on. Unless kids you TV. don't want to be. Be children, safe. Be safe. Children, in the words of Uver, don't <laughs> do the dumb. <laughs> yes. All be, right. We need s- a ukulele song about OSHA-approved things. Be safe and heist safety. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to listen to this twelve-hour seminar. Thank you. <laughs> I'd like to talk to you when about when escaping on the what helicopter. Heist make means. sure you wear high vi- high-res vest and you are safely attached with your H. <laughs> Have a safe time. Jordy, at work. please save us. Jordy, he, save he everyone will is important to the team. Oh my! I Speaking of I, I'm going safe. to go ahead and get this game started. <laughs> <laughs> I was really hoping you'd misspell it. <laughs> Contact me online for the other two letters. <laughs> Join our Patreon. Yeah, for get the on our letters. Discord for the other two letters. No, no, Patreon. We got to monetize this. <laughs> the moon is now high in the sky. Several hours have passed now as you have been riding on following the direction of the woman you rescued in the previous episode as she's been showing you the way to get to the town where they were to meet her husband. As you crest over the hill, you can see the town ahead nestled into a small valley with some trees around it, smoke curling out of the scattered chimneys. It's not a big settlement, but it's also not a hamlet or something small. There's a few houses. It is, at this point, Zephyr, roughly 2.37 and a half in the morning. (laughs) Thank you. I figured my nose was a little clogged from the the smoky area in the previous fight, but I think it must have cleared up by now. (laughs) It hasn't. It's actually 2.38 and a half. (laughs) Oh, dang it. Left nostril. (laughs) There's about a second delay between nostrils. (laughs) Different time zones. <laughs> <laughs> the speed of smell. What happens if you have a deviated septum? <laughs> <laughs> what time is it again? <laughs> By now, it actually is 2.39 and three quarters. A.M.? Yes, A.M. No. P.M. <laughs> the moon is high in the sky and you have several hours before dawn, but you have arrived at the town. What town are we at? Uh, Stag Watch. Stag Watch. So we've arrived at deer spotting. Did she say she was from this area or were they traveling to it? They were traveling to it. Uh, Her husband had gone ahead to stake a claim and, you know, set up their new house. And then once it was ready, he'd called back for the wife and the daughter to join him there. And they were on their way. Okay. Val is going to ride up to this lady and she's going to say, Do you know where um, your husband is? Which house he's staying at? I don't know exactly. He said it was a house on the south side of town, which would would be on the opposite end from where we've arrived. Right, let's um, hope he's waiting up for you. I'm sure he's probably worried as you've been delayed. Right, we we were supposed to arrive uh, before sundown today, so uh, thanks to you all, we're only a few hours later than expected, rather than... Well, yeah. 
Let's see if we can find your husband. So you head into town. It's pretty quiet. There don't seem to be many people up. The roads are nicely put together cobble, and you can hear the horse's hooves clopping as you make your way through town. You're just entering the town square, which is all built surrounding the town well, when you hear a voice calling out. Hey, you! What are you doing here? (laughs) You as in we, or we as in they. The whole lot of you. It's middle of the night, riding into town like this. What's your business? Um, Coming into town is our business? There's supposed to be a guard at the gate. A figure steps out from the shadows of like, I forget what they're called. There's like an awning over a door kind of thing. And as he does so, he lights a torch on a sconce by the door. And there's a tall, dark haired man in kind of slapped together armor just standing there. I'm the town guard. What's your business here in the middle of the night? Um, we're looking for this lady's husband. They were waylaid on the road. Is that right? Can I make a check on this guy? What, what do you want to know? Um, well, you said his armor was slapped together. I know you said this town wasn't, like, big, but surely they'd have a better armor set for their town guard. Why? Gotcha, gotcha. What's your society again? Are you expert? Yeah, I'm expert. So it, you don't have to roll for this. You can just sizing him up. You realize this guy is not really funded by any political oh, power. So I'm master. Oh, you're a master? Yeah. Master. <laughs> <laughs> As a master of society, you can very readily tell that this guy's not hired by any political power. The various pieces of his armor look like, you know, he bought one from this shop, one from that shop, all various different smithing practices or techniques. Um, His left greave is actually like pitted and rusted and looks like it needs replaced, but his right gauntlet looks shiny and new. So you get the sense that he's personally funding his armor just wherever he can find it. So nothing to say that he's actually a town guard instead of just some dude who wants to be protective? Yeah, his outfit does not reinforce what he's saying. So it could just be some random guy trying to do a shakedown. Could be. Okay. Um. Yeah, we're just we just arrived late. That's all. And we're looking for a place to stay after we find her husband's new home. Right. Heavily armored for travelers. It's dangerous world. I mean, that is why we're late. We were taken upon by some. Bad boys. Ghouls. I'm, I'm in clothing. <laughs> She's in clothing. Yeah, I'm not wearing armor. There was a ghoul. We have two of you. There there was a ghoul priest and some ghouls along the road. Right. suppose that makes sense enough. Who are you looking for? Uh, her husband. He, <laughs> she said that. Uh, what is your husband's name? As he leans over to uh, the lady. Uh, uh, Balinor. Surname. Uh, oh, Kaiden. You're Balinor's wife. He, he's been expecting you. Uh, follow me right this way. I, I'll, I'll show you where he's at. Well, no, hold on, hold on. You said you're the guard. Are there any others? I mean, there should be at least someone to protect while well, you're. I mean, we can escort her as long as you tell us where to go. I mean, it's fair, I could. Still keep a watch here at the town. If, if you head down uh, that road there, and he points down the south, it's it's the longhouse with the thatched roof right before you leave town. There's a white sow out front. Oh, so thank you. That's nice of you, sir. And what was your name, sir? My name's Adam. Adam. <laughs> you are the only guard, aren't you? Uh, yeah. That's a noble thing you're doing. Town this size, we're lucky to have someone like me who knows how to swing a sword. Be safe, Adam. You as well. May Desna watch your travels. And I just urge the horse forward, going down the road. We'll hope to speak with you maybe in more in the morning, after the sun's up. Right, well, I'll be, I'll be sleeping in, doing the night shift and all. Uh, but if you find me afternoon, we could talk then. 
Um, I, just in case they don't have room for us, is there a inn that we can go to? Well, there's not one as such, but old lady Paisley, she's often got some room upstairs for travellers and like, but it'd be a bit cramped for all of you lot. And, and it's pretty late. I'm sure she's already asleep. Oh, undoubtedly. She goes to bed before the sun does, she does. Oh, that was weird. <laughs> but Maybe if um they can't house us for the night, we can just set up camp outside of town. Yeah. And then uh, if we have to stay another night, we can talk to some people. Right. I mean, there's not, not that much night left, really. Well, we'll be sleeping for a while. I was going to say, we're <laughs> quite tired. We don't may I sleep know. in the same as you. Well, um, I don't have space at my place. No, I meant the time. <laughs> I, I just wanted to be clear. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, it was great meeting you, Adam. Right. Uh, Dozen of watch over you. Oh, I said that already. Well, have a good night. You uh, as well. My phrasma guard your soul. May my spells be good to you. <laughs> Let's just go. <laughs> a few minutes pass as you follow the road south out of town. And as Adam had mentioned, shortly before you really leave the town proper, there is a longhouse covered with a thatch roof with a white sow out front. Farm terminology is breaking me. Sow is cow or sow is pig? Pig. Female pig. Thank you. Well, we'll um let you go in and we'll be here if you need us for anything. And she takes the daughter in her arms and heads up to the door and like pauses, looks back at you all. Uh, thank you again. Please come and see us tomorrow afternoon. We, I'm sure my husband will want to thank you too. Val gives us thumbs up. <laughs> And she looks back at each of you and just kind of gives you a nod before heading inside. And just as the door is closing, you hear, Bernice! All right. Um, we'll just go make a camp outside of town, I suppose, right? Uh, we're basically outside of town now. Yeah. Um, well, let's not do it outside their house. Well, I wasn't suggesting that. You turn around and Zephyr's got his hands in his packs like he was just about to start... <laughs> Setting up his tent. He side. was seconds away from having. Do they tent. have a wall in this town at all? No. Okay. Is there a grove of trees? Uh, there's some trees. The trees are thicker to the north of town, but there are trees pretty much surrounding it all. Uh, the town is how to describe the location. It's not out in the clear like valleys that's leading out into the moors south of Gringir Forest, but it's not in the forest either. It's in that mid-range where there are trees, but you're not in the forest yet. Well, let's just go and sleep. I'm very tired. We pull out to a long view and we see from above as the party heads away from the house and heads off to the south to get some clearance from town before setting up camp. Our camera just kind of stays in position as we crossfade now to midday. The sun is high in the sky as the party is now returning to the house in the early afternoon as they'd been requested. I give the front door a little knock, knock, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> do you have to always do it that way, Zephyr? I mean, they can't tell that I'm doing it from this angle. They just hear the knock. It's just fun. Well, they also hear the nudge. As you're discussing this, the door is opened by a stocky man with a bushy brown beard. And he's like, can I help you? So as he opens the door, I was just in recreating the nudge nudge. So I'm looking over at Val just going, and then I poke him slightly. You're... Um, <laughs> He's, he's a stockily built fellow, but he's not particularly tall. So with the height of Zephyr, you end up just kind of like poking him in the chest. Your your, um, your wife told us that Zephyr stopped poking that man. I'm sorry. Your wife asked us to show back up today. Oh, you're the ones who saved them. Please come inside. Come inside. Inside the building, it's very clean and very empty. It doesn't take a master detective to realize the house has very recently been constructed and furnished. hasn't really been moved into yet or furnished like you were saying Sam uh, inside Bernice has like a pot that she's stirring and she looks up and is like oh thank you you came back I, we did want to thank you so much 
Oh, uh, no thanks are really necessary. I mean, we were just doing what anyone should do. Um, you know, keep saving your life and all. We were happy that we were at the right place at the right time. Yes. There's a precious few who would see people in peril like that and put their own lives in stake. You're good folk. And we need more of them like you here in the lands of the Linum Kings. Well, we appreciate your thanks. compliment. Your thanks, yes. Uh, we wanted to thank you, and he pulls out, like, a oil skin pouch. He's like, it, it, it's not much, but we don't have a lot to go around. Uh, good folk. I think... Do things for without, pay- yeah. without payment in mind. You, you literally lost most of your stuff in that wagon back there. I, I would suggest keep it. Oh, I've got these. And he starts pulling out a couple of the... the um, Whatever it was that he salvaged from the cart. Apples? Apples. Apple. <laughs> oh, oh, and my hand carved the whistle. Uh, yes, that, that too. I kind of wanted that. But no, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> if it makes you feel better, consider it a donation from Phrasma. But that was from me. I no, don't no, know not if that, that makes stuff. Me the money. Better. The money. Oh, right, right, right. <laughs> That's from the church of Phrasma. Yeah. Well, I do thank you from the bottom of my heart. And if you if you aren't going to accept our coin, I do hope for asthma. You said I hope for asthma blesses you all heartily. Thank you. Well, be safe, and I wish you well. Of course, thank you, thank you. And he like is starting to look a little bit uncomfortable. And like Bernice is like, and he's like, no, no, no. <laughs> Everything okay? Should we leave? Are we making you uncomfortable? Is Einar making you uncomfortable? He's very large. <laughs> Bernice like gestures to him like a come on kind of gesture. <laughs> and he's like, no, they've already done enough. They Let them, whatever they're doing, let oh, them go on I mean, their way. Is there something we can help with? He just has, uh, Einar just has this smile. <laughs> well, all right, I'll... Please do not feel required or put upon to take any business in this. I will, to humor my wife, tell you what is going on here. Did we? F- oh, yeah, we did find out what this guy's name was. Yes. Uh, Bal- Balon- Balonar. Balinor. Balinor. Wait, Balinor and Patrice? Furnace. Furnace. Bernice? Bernice. <laughs> Furnace. Sorry. My grandmother's name is Bernice, not Bernice, so I think. Baroness, when I think of that name. Ah. Well, so there's a group of, I don't know what you call them, ruffians, scoundrels, bandits. They they live not far here. They've got a camp just a few miles west out of town, and they've just been harassing this whole township. They'd been doing it since before I got here, and it's just been getting worse. Do you want to check in with Adam about that? Um, we'd like to help if we can. Well, I, I, of course, I don't want you to feel uh, imposed upon. I don't want you to feel like, you know, you, you've got to do something. I just... Well, forgive me, but this is a small town. What can they find of value to just constantly set here? It's food, mostly. I don't know what they're doing. It's some sort of, like, military encampment. It's like they're preparing for some war or something. Oh, oh. we're probably dealing with that anyway. That sounds like why we're here. Sounds yeah. like our interests are mixed. Not, not a part of them, to be clear. Oh, right. We're here <laughs> oh, to put a oh. stop to what they're doing, uh, which would include what is happening to the small town here. I, I don't mean to be nosy, but I mean, what are you doing here? Well, just you well, know, sp- just stop here specifically. General revolution, stopping things and murder <laughs> stuff. No, a murder stopping stuff, not um, not doing. Unless, do you want them dead? You're making wait. It worse. No, sorry, old habits. <laughs> I, all right. <laughs> I, that one got me pretty. <laughs> I, I wouldn't necessarily say a revolution. I mean, it sounds kind of revolutionary what they're trying to do. I mean, but we're not like uh, leading. A no, we are not. They are. We're to, but they're they're revolting. They're a drug family. No. The bad people. That's that what I'm saying. The, they're a crime family. I don't know if crime families. But can... they're trying to overthrow the established that's government. That's a coup. I, yeah, I that's, that's a revolution. That's not a revolution. A revolutions that's a coup. are positive, uh, for the most part. A coup is a takeover. Well, 
semantics. Not really. Revolution is nor positive nor negative. It's all in the context. But yeah, that's what we're doing here, though, is all of that. I can see that I'm out of my depth in discussing the finer points of this professional. <laughs> <laughs> A revolution stopping, probably. But I will let you know they've been, they've been bothering and harassing the entire town side, and I mean, we can't offer you much as I'm, I'm sure I'm sure you know, but I'm sure they've got many valuables they've taken there at the camp, and if you stop them, I know most of us here around would be quite happy to let you keep whatever you can find there. How many are there? Well, at least. Well, let me see. Hold on. Let <laughs> <laughs> look at my notes. Pulls out his laptop. Somewhere between 20 and 30. Do they ever give a name? Well, most of them call themselves the Wolfskin Warriors. You've seen them, right? I've only seen some of their more, I don't know, junior members? I don't know how to describe it. They're not, they're not the real threatening ones. Right. Do you know if there's a leader? I don't know for sure. I've heard a couple different names mentioned. Uh, Torval... Brenger, Chalmont. What was the third one? Chalmont. It's like I don't know some foreign words. Chalmont. It's uh. <laughs> Sounds French. I go. What is it's, French? It's Nidalese. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> and it does sound like the people that we're dealing with. We should check in with Adam and see what he knows before we head out. Uh, he might have some information that can help us. Uh, Balinor, do you know what time Adam usually wakes up? I mean, you've only been here for, like, a couple of days, I, I would assume. <laughs> well, not that fast at building a house. It's been more like six weeks, I think. Oh, that's actually incredible. <laughs> I am a skilled carpenter. Also, I haven't been working by myself. For some reason, I was under the impression that you were here for, like, two days and then you sent word... Uh, no, I've been sort of, you know, laying stakes to the claim and getting things set up. Been civilizing it before I brought the wife and kid over. I know this is far beyond the reasons we're here and probably inconsequential, but after knowing about all these things for these, what you said, six, six weeks, um, why did you decide to stay here of all places? Well, couldn't really sell the property and buy something else. You know, property values tend to go down when you're being attacked by raiders. Well, uh, Howard's going to uh, telekinetic hand the back of Zephyr's coat and like, we'll go talk with Adam. Just curious. In the meantime, what are we do with these people? It would be best, so you're not targeted, that you don't know us. Right. Right. Yes, I don't know who any of you are. Well, I mean... No, they no. don't know who we are either. You never did introduce yourselves to me. Oh, well, I'm... <laughs> no, I don't know who you are. <laughs> if they are seen by association... No, I'm saying the criminal empire doesn't really know that we're doing this either. They will. I, I don't know if they will. <laughs> We've been Not out of... traveling for like a month and a half and none of them have heard of us. And, we've taken out, and you've taken out how many of them? Three? But yes. Well, besides... Well, and I nudge over or three plus point a over it. Yeah, uh, Yova. Or two. Plus is Yova in there or is she standing outside? Did you ask her to wait outside? I don't think we did. Mm -hmm. So I she's standing in there with you. Oh, I am also not in there. Oh. Oh. She's the only uh, oh. one not in there. Just standing outside the house. No, that would have been information I'm, to know. I'm playing on the fence outside. Ah, makes sense. Fair. We will go and talk to Adam. Be safe. Of course, and you too. And Einar just turns around and herds everybody out the door. I was already trying to herd him out the I door. <laughs> this has happened far too many times to me in the last few days. You talk too much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm just learning this now. <laughs> so, are you just heading into the town square and looking for Adam? Yeah, I suppose so. Are you, like, asking around or just looking for him? I know I would ask around. Same. Well, is it somewhat densely populated, like, for people to ask around? Or is this kind of just a walk-in and people are doing their business? Um, 
when you get to the town square, it's not difficult to find someone, but it's certainly not densely packed. Small town. Yeah. So the first couple of people you ask are not sure where Adam is, although they confirm that he's usually up by this time. Um, but the third person you ask mentions that they saw him over at Old Lady Paisley's place. I ask where Old Lady Paisley is. Oh, right over there. And there's a rather nice looking house with some ivy climbing up the sides. I really do want to climb the ivy. All right. Um, is Nero's with us? You think so? Nope. That That's actually a question because if we walked out, we would gather everybody. Einar especially. Yes, Einar would look. <laughs> Big bear hug. If you want her with you, she will be with you. I want Nero's to be out having a fun time doing Nero's things. Like... Punching civilians. Side quest. Nero's. It, it, Why would she be stuff. punching civilians? I couldn't think of anything. That's not on the what spot. she do. I'm sorry. Prank. Pranking civilians. Ah, throwing glitter By on civilians. Punching them. Yeah. I'm saving the glitter prank, for bro. other things. Oh, okay. It's just a prank. <laughs> it's just a prank. So, are you all going into the building, or is one of you climbing the ivy? Or <laughs> I think I'll just stick in the square just to keep an eye out. Einar's going, so okay. I'll go to talk to him. Yeah. Neros is still unaccounted for, I presume? Uh-huh. Einar would look. <laughs> if he finds her, that's another thing. But Einar would look. What's your passive perception? She's on the fence. Good question. <laughs> oh, are you coming to talk to Adam, or are you going to hang around and talk to people? No, I, I'll, I'll come to talk to Adam. I'm just still imagining someone punching somebody in the face, being like, it's just a prank. You know what? I think Val is not going to go talk to Adam. I think... He, just let Howard and Einar, since they seem like they, they, they know a lot more about what's going on and ha- how to approach qu- asking questions. So Val's going to um, instead set up some music in the square mm-hmm. and start playing. Once again, Jenkins and Sven are put together to go ask questions. Hey! Hey! <laughs> I don't think it ever worked well when we were. No, it did. <laughs> <laughs> and where are you guys having Yulva go? She can stay with, I think, with Val and Zephyr in the square, because I think if Val's going to play music, Zephyr's just going to sit and enjoy. Einar's not keeping a close guard on her, so she can pretty well follow whomever as long as she... I think she's sticking with the party for now. Yeah. So far. Yeah. I think she's just free to do what you feel like she would do. Yeah. Okay. Betray us and tell the berserkers we're here to, so they can raid the town. All so- right. So we've got Albert and Einar are heading in to talk with Adam. And then Val and Zephyr are in the square. Val's playing some music. And Cornelius and Yilva are kind of hanging out with them. I'm just imagining Eyeball Man sitting in the town, <laughs> forgetting <laughs> I mean, that he's an Eyeball Man. He's got his hood like pulled up around his face and everything. is just kind of blending in as a short dude. He's walking an expert. By, you'd be like, ah! <laughs> he's an old hat at blending in. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead and follow Einar and Alward first. As you guys head into Old Lady Paisley's house, it looks like it used to be a farmhouse, but has been recently retrofitted to be more like a tavern common area kind of place. So there's not a lot of space and the tables are all close together, but it could be used as like a common area gathering hub. Uh, Adam is sitting at one of the tables with a big tank of water, it appears, and a plate of bread and cheese. Good morning, or afternoon. Oh, wow. You're up and at it pretty early. I was expecting you'd be still sleeping off your trouble from last night. I'm honestly not as bad as I've seen some, but we had a few questions for you. Um... Raiders, I hear. He like starts like scrambling to stand up, and he's not, like, oh, "Again? No, here. wait, not here, not now." Oh, oh, you gave me a fright, you did. We learned from, um, what was his name? Sorry, uh, Bern, <laughs> not Bernice, uh, Bl- Blenard, Balinor, Balinor, We learned from Balinor that this town is having trouble with raiders, the wolf skins. Yeah, wolfskin warriors, they call themselves. Yes. More than, you know, a mercenary like myself, former mercenary like myself, can really stand up against. We have some 
and I'll say this in the sense that we're not part of them, business with him. The way that you specified that makes me uncomfortable. Well, if I say we had business with him, it sounds like we're working with him. Oh, uh, right, okay, uh, right, okay. Um, we're not. Oh, all right, good, good to know. The opposite, to be precise. Well, oh. well, you've already won a few points in my book. Do you know where the camp is? Uh, west of town. I don't know the exact location. They move it from time to time, but they do keep in that sort of little valley there. And do they come on a schedule? No, no. Uh, Any time. Sometimes at night, sometimes during the day, uh, sometimes on a Saturday. And they just take food, or what do they do? Mostly food, yeah. Our stores are really running low, and I'm honestly, I'm worried about this upcoming winter. Uh, they've, they've burned us out of all of our spare. And luckily, we're here into spring, but most folk are really warm, thin between planting crops for this year and trying to forage for something out of the fields and woods to eat now while they're waiting for the crops. Have you seen the leader? No, no. He never comes by himself, just sends his lackeys. And what's his name? From what I've been able to gather, it sounds like Brenger's the one in charge, but some of the other groups talked about some other names. I've, I've heard... Isolde, as well? Brenga and Isolde. Yeah, those are the two I've heard. Takes a bite of his bread. Einar looks over at Alward. And, uh, any questions you have? Uh, when was the last time they arrived? Oh, uh, last raid was... Well, would have been just over two weeks now. And uh, what do you do during the raids? What do I do? I'll, I'll just make sure we've got all the women and children in one place and so that we can protect them because I'm the only one that knows how to swing a sword. Don't make that weird looking face at me, mister. Well, it's just if you have them all in one place, it's just a central target if they actually wanted to harm the women and children. If they want to harm the women and children, there's not a lot we could do. We just make sure that we know where they are. I suppose that's fair. Luckily, the only people who've been killed or injured are those who stand up against them and refuse to give them what they want. But really, they seem to be just here for the spoils of war, as they call it. So you haven't stood up against them? I try to keep them away from people, but I, I, I'm, I'm just one man. I can't keep them away from the goods. That is understandable. Thank you, Adam, for the information. Of course, of course. Yeah, and if there's any... Any other questions you think of anything else that could be of help? I mean, I don't know. Don't know what would be of help. I don't know what you're planning to do or how you're planning to go about it. I think it was a bit of fate that led us here to save one of your townspeople and perhaps solve your issue. Right. Fate. Fate's always been on my side before. It's a fickle thing. And I can't say I've always believed in it either. And sometimes, it doesn't matter what, nothing goes your way. How long have you been living here? I think it's been three, no, no, four years now. Four years. What uh, brought you here first? Just passing through, looking for work, and found a place that needed a sword and settled down. I got to like the people here, and pays not much (laughs) it's nothing anymore just you know enough to live off of but you know you you find people you like and you you stick around try to do what's right Einar just holds out his hand to shake Adam kind of like wipes his hand off on his tunic before accepting yours from one warrior to another right give you a Warriors, congratulations and blessing and send all the fate and luck I can with you. You're going to need it. Einar smiles and just taps his sword. And if luck runs out. <laughs> <laughs> right. Cut yourself some luck out of the fabric of... Well, I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> <laughs> Good start. We swordsmen make our own luck. I don't know. Sometimes. I'll, I'll, I'm going to quit while I'm ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Let's uh, let's go find the others. All right, and as the two of you head out of Old Lady Paisley's house, oh, we didn't say hi to the old lady. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> was, she, was she there? I was just sitting over here knitting. 
I don't know why I've got a southern accent. Because <laughs> <laughs> we're in South Grundy. <laughs> South uh, Grundy. We're actually we're in Southmore. <laughs> it's true. So with that, we will then change our focus over to uh, Val, Zephyr, and company who are out in the middle of town. Val, you're playing music, I presume, on your fiddle? Yeah. Gotcha. Go ahead and make a performance check for me. Oh, boy. It's been a while, I think, since I've done that. Um, this is going to determine how big or small my 22. smile is. So, yeah, with a 22, your music is quite nice. Um, it As passers-by, you know, hear you play, they'll stop and listen for a bit and move on. W- one of the people just kind of, like, listens for a bit and listens through another song and then just kind of, like, empties his pocket and shrugs before... Heading on his way. Like, <laughs> I, I would tip you, but I can't. That's fine. Not here for that. Abby, did you have anything that Neros was doing? Other than playing on the fence? She stopped playing on the fence when everyone came outside. She's very bored, so she's probably up to no good. After every song, Zephyr has clapped. <laughs> Just a nice little modest good job. That was very good. Thank you, Zephyr. I figure I have nothing else to do, so I might as well sit here and listen and enjoy. I appreciate it. Um, sorry, I didn't say too much about it last night, but um, I'm happy you've made your decision about um, the whole killing people situation. Well, I, it's it's still a developing. Uh, concept in my mind. It's been quite some time, so uh, it hasn't come full full effect yet. Well, all the same, proud of you. Thank you. I I I, I realize that uh, it's it's nicer having people around. I'm finding that as well. It's nice to have a whole group of people here. Who we can rely on. And she'll kind of focus in back to her music. As the two of you are kind of like sitting there in the awkward silence after your conversation, Yilva just kind of leans forward and drops a couple coins into Val's violin case and is like, how about another song? Oh, um, sure. Yeah. Anything in particular? Something, something cheery. All right, cheery it is. I didn't know you had money. <laughs> I, I've got a good amount of money. We've been paying for your room. Well, I mean, I was sleeping in the room with... Never mind. Hey, Val. Um, yeah. Why don't you play that, um, that two fetching fetchlings? I, th- I, th- I thought you despised that song, Zephyr. Well, it's... <laughs> I think that was the last thing you used to describe it. It's it's been a while, and I've I've got to make sure I I still don't lack it. Yeah, that's that's why. <laughs> okay, sure. Yeah, I can give it a little rundown on what I've been working on with it. And Val, you're just finishing the first stanza and getting ready to go into the chorus when you hear a voice, Yilva, what are you doing here? And that's where we'll end this episode. I I don't like that. I don't like that, Jordy. Uh, Jordy, can you not? That's not good. We're too close. And the hero point for this episode goes to Sven for uh, bringing Einar in and kind of pushing through, driving things forward in the story. Yay. Wow. Uh, Wow. Thank you uh, for letting Einar be the bulldozer. Um, (laughs) But uh, I think I'm going to go and listen to some music. (laughs) And we'll see you all in the next episode. This has been an Atomic Broadcasting production. Pathfinder, Galarian, and the Lost Omens world setting are copyright of Paizo. More information at paizo.com. Music in the show is from Monument Studios' collection, as well as assorted artists with some original tracks composed by Jordy Hake. More details in the description. 
If you enjoyed the show, please remember to share with a friend, and we'll look forward to seeing you again next time. Did anybody have any scenes they wanted to open the day with, or where do you want me to transition to? White transition. Star. Oh, star. Fancy. <laughs> I was thinking of Ripple. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Page turn. <laughs> I like that. Page uh, rip. Uh. <laughs> My question is, what do you want me to transition to you guys doing after you have a nice night of sleep? Copious amounts of hardcore drugs, Jordan. All right. So we have a wipe transition. Alward is just snorting lines. <laughs> Alward is wiped. <laughs>